And so that brings me to the first major UI element that I'd like to tell you about, which is the channel box and the layer editor right here on the right hand side. So this is a uh, menu that will tell you everything about what you have selected in the scene. So right now I have a camera selected and you can read that it has a name, camera one, and then it has all these attributes here down uh, on the right. So we have translate, X, Y, and Z, rotate, X, Y, and Z, scale, X, Y, and Z, and visibility. So what translate means is where it is in relation to the scene. Now if you look over here on the right, every time I move these, there's different values being assigned. It's updating on the fly. It's only affecting the translate because I'm only translating this camera through the uh, 3D world space. If I were to rotate this, which I could do by hitting the E key, which is the hot key for rotate, I can begin to rotate this camera and all these values updated here on the right. Uh, I could also scale it. If you hit the R button, you can scale things up and down. Now if you hit W, you go back to translate mode. So um, a lot of new information here all at once. So we can move things around, we can rotate them, and we can scale them by using the hotkeys W, E, and R. So W, E, and R. And those are three keys you'll be using a lot as you develop your career in 3D. Um, in fact, they are the most used keys in this 3D application besides maybe the mouse uh, just moving around the scene. So, um, like I was saying, all these values now correspond to this camera. And the reason we have this is so that we could find that object in the 3D scene if we needed to. Uh, or we can move things around in discrete units if we need to. <coughs> um, so it's sort of like a treasure map that leads you back to what you have selected. On the other hand, if you wanted to find something in your 3D scene that you couldn't find, if you use the hotkey F, it will focus the camera on whatever it is you have selected. So that's also a handy tip. So if you look down underneath the uh, channels, the translation channels, you can see that we have a couple of unique attributes here. And these are specific to cameras. So like I was saying, how each camera in the 3D scene has unique values that you can assign to it and ways of controlling it just like a real physical camera. Those appear here on the right. So you've got things like focal length, f-stop, uh, all the things you'd expect to see on a real camera. And this is just so you can cinematically cinem simulate a real camera if you're composing like a 3D short animation or working on a visual effects shot, stuff like that. But of course, these attributes are unique to this type of object, which is a camera. If I were to go ahead and create a cube, and don't worry so much about what I'm doing here right now, but so now I have a cube in the scene. Now this has special attributes that we could also manipulate. So it has the same uh, attributes that the camera has, which are the translate, the rotate, and the scale. Oh, and I forgot to mention the visibility. If we toggle this off, the object will basically disappear from the scene, although it still exists in the scene, it's just no longer visible. So we can turn this back on, and you can type on, on, or you can just hit number one, which corresponds to on, and it comes back. Um, so since this is not a camera, it has different attributes to it, and if we click this polycube one input, we have some new attributes we can work with, such as the width, the height, and what I'm doing is I'm selecting this channel and I'm using the middle mouse button to alter it. So I'm holding down the middle mouse button and I'm going left to right with the mouse and it's altering that, uh, in this case the height and also the depth. So width refers to the x-axis. Depth refers to the z-axis. Height, of course, goes up and down on the y-axis. So you can see that the z-axis is pointing here, and that's how depth is correlated. At the same time, we also have a couple of subdivision attributes here. So we could add more edges running down. And uh, 
I won't talk too much more about this because we're going to be getting into it when we are uh, covering polygons, but I just wanted to express how different things in Maya have different attributes and behave differently. Um, also, some things are renderable and some things are not renderable. So if I were to render this scene, uh, you'd only be able to see the cube and the grid and the camera would not appear. And uh, let's just do that really quick. So again, don't worry about what I just did or how I did it, but just to express the general uh, philosophy here that only three-dimensional objects can be rendered in a scene. Everything else will disappear. Uh, so you can see that the background rendered is black because there's actually nothing there. Uh, if we wanted to have some kind of background, we'd have to create that too. So anything you want to actually render in a scene at some point has to be created. And uh, if I can just uh, get on my soapbox for a second, I work as a 3D professional modeler at DreamWorks. And uh, it's just kind of cool to think about all these 3D films you see, you know, the Pixar films and, and otherwise. Uh, everything has to be modeled at some point. So all the backgrounds, all the trees, the landscapes, the buildings, uh, the people walking around, the props they interact with, all that stuff has to be modeled by hand at some point. Um, it's kind of cool. There's a lot of work that goes into it, but that's kind of what makes it a neat thing. So uh, carrying on, underneath the channel box, which if you have nothing selected in, nothing will appear, we have the layer dialog box. And I'm only going to really talk about display layers because that's all we really need to worry about. There's other things like render layers and animation layers, but we don't have to worry about that for right now. So if you've ever used the program Photoshop, you may be familiar with the term layer, which in that case is kind of like layering transparent cells on top of each other over a 2D canvas. Well, that's not exactly the same way that Maya treats layers here. Um, if you click this button here, it's got this little, uh, I guess it's like a new symbol, a creation symbol. We can create an empty layer, and here it is. So it comes in by default in layer 1. And you could select this cube, and then right click on the layer, and say add selected objects. And so now this layer contains this cube. That doesn't mean that we can do anything special with the order that these layers appear in. Um, and it's not going to create any kind of like visual difference. It's just sort of a way of categorizing your stuff. So for example, if I were modeling perhaps like a city sidewalk, maybe I'd want to put all the lampposts on one layer. Not because it's going to make any difference visually, but because I can easily turn the visibility on and off now. So it's sort of like a toggle. So as you may have guessed, this little dialog box with a V in it means visibility. Um, it's also kind of nice because I could also go in here with the right mouse, mouse button and say select objects. So in this case, if I had that same city scene, if I wanted to select all the lampposts all at the same time, if I had them all in the same layer, I could just say select all objects and all, you know, 150 lampposts or however many there are would all become selected at once, which could be very convenient. Uh, we can also do some other things here. If you click this empty box right here, this is T for template. So what that does is it takes the objects inside the layer and it turns them into this little wireframe. And I can't do any sort of selection with it now. So it kind of locks it into place. Same thing with this R, which stands for reference. It's the same thing, but it's not in wireframe mode. But I still can't click it. Although I can turn the visibility on and off. And then if you click this again, it just goes back to normal. Uh, now if you double click this layer 1 window, you can edit the layer and that in this case you have a lot of the same things we just talked about. So you've got template and reference. You can add a color to the layer. It's not going to make any difference in the 3D scene again. It's just going to give you a color reference in this area. So I could say, okay, well I want this to be red and I want this to be called the cube layer. Just for example. Oh, so it doesn't like the fact that I have a space here, so I'm going to use an underscore. Okay, so there it is. So it's just a way of organizing things in your scene. And speaking of organization, we should talk about a very important dialog box called the Outliner. So if you go to the Window menu, 
and select Outliner, it's going to bring up this little narrow dialog box. And what this is, is a list of everything that's inside your scene. So by default, within every scene, you're going to have a perspective, a top, a front, and a side camera, like we talked about before. And you can differentiate what these things are by looking at the little icon on the left. You've got a little camera icon here. Uh, we also have this extra camera that I made myself called Camera 1. And we've got the cube that I created. And you'll notice that I don't have a... I don't have any sort of indication for the grid because this is really a, a very basic part of Maya. And I haven't created anything else in the scene, so nothing else is going to be visible here. Now I do have this thing called Default Light Set and Default Object Set. And these are always going to be here. You can pretty much ignore them. But it's worth noting that in the scene we also have a light source that's illuminating the scene. and. Um, just like I have a camera that I use to, to view the scene with. So, uh, not so important for us right now, but just so you know that there's, there are these things that exist in the scene and are doing all these things for us that we get for free. So, um, if I were to duplicate this cube by using Control D, and I'm sure we'll talk about this again later, but I can make duplicates of this cube and do all sorts of funny things with them if I want. Um, but just to note that Maya will automatically take the same name that the other cube had and add an extra number to it so it increments. And you can never have something in Maya that has the same name as something else. Even if I have a, a layer, I could never name one of these cubes layer 2 or layer 3 because Maya has a rule that you can't do that so that things don't get confused. Um, as you can well imagine, if you've seen some of the new Transformer movies or, or any CG movie, uh, that has come out recently, you can see that things get very, very complex. And to make those visual effects happen, you have Maya scenes that have, you know, maybe 10,000 or 20,000 different objects in them. You know, really epically huge. So you can well imagine how confusing it would be if you could name something the same. So it's, it's very important that we have uh, things separate like that. And by the way, this name is not arbitrary. But it's P for polygon, cube, that's what it is, and then the number that it is. And we'll talk more about what polygons actually mean later. But this is just a primer for you to, to understand the 3D program itself.